What is up guys? Thanks for watching as always. Uh, today we're making a lure that I have been sent from Japan. Started off from wood. Um, we'll be doing some foiling and after that it will uh, pop like this and swim like this. So uh, grab your popcorn, let's do this. Now uh, I received this uh, particular bait in the mail. Uh, we've been working on a new design. Um, it's a neat looking lure. Uh, the face has already been burnt out um, in Japan. Everything had been balanced already. Uh, and I was just going to uh, take care of the, the foiling, the painting, and uh, the testing as well. So, as you can see, this is all finished up. It's already got a very nice uh, urethane coat over it. Uh, and that allows the spray paint directly over it. Um, now, at this point, I had just spray painted uh, just a red base coat on it. Um, as you can see that urethane really makes a big difference. I might actually uh, transition into doing that because it's a very smooth base coat. Um, but from here we're just doing some foiling. So uh, regular red base coat and some uh, regular foil as we always do. Now cool thing is this face had been uh, burned out with some uh, very special tools. I don't know exactly how it works. There's a lot of uh, uh, craftsmanship going into it. Um, but it allows for a much more fluid transition between uh, sections of the wood. Um, that's a trick I'll probably have to start learning as well. So um, anyway, we're foiling the face here. This is a, a new face uh, design uh, that we've uh, come up with. Uh, looks really, really good. We'll probably do a lot of baits uh, like this. So. Um, here you see the, the first part of the foiling job, that's, got, that's just the face, uh, looks really really good. Now we wanted this bait to have uh, many purposes, uh, so it's been balanced out to do uh, popping, uh, it will wiggle from side to side on a um, straight retrieve, um, yeah all sorts of stuff, very uh, multi-purpose. So, um, that's why I haven't been able to show you the balancing process because that's all been done in Japan. Uh, but I'll take care of the uh, <laughs> the foiling and the paint job and the testing. So uh, either way, since we've got such a nice foiling job on the face uh, and the face cut out looks so awesome, I figured I might as well do a scale pattern on the uh, on the gill plates itself. Uh, now I made this little tool for last video and I didn't really show you how I made the tool, but it's essentially a exacto knife blade uh, bent in a um, half circle shape uh, around a screw um, and then uh, fixed onto a uh, brush holder sounds very difficult it's much simpler than that it pretty much is a, a half moon shape and it allows us to uh, make uh, exact copies of each scale that we press into the foil um, now for the color and foil pattern we're actually doing a Nemo color we hadn't done this one before so um, figures might as well make one now a lot of the um, uh, well-known uh, GT lure brands uh, Carpenter um, geez Hammerhead I think makes one uh, even Motokan Maru um, you name it West Coast Poppers they they all do like a, a Nemo color been quite popular in the uh, GT popping scene. Uh, not that it's going to improve your catch rate or anything, but it's got a. I guess it catches the fisherman and catches the angler, not so much on the fish, but uh, we figure we do one as well. So we're doing a super fine scale pattern on the uh, foil stripes. Uh, it's not exactly going to be white and orange as uh, Nemo is, but it's uh, close enough. So um, we did a round scale pattern on the stripe that goes over the head. You made with the exact same tool that you saw in a previous um, clip, and at this point, uh, we're just doing the fine uh, straight cut scale pattern, diamond cut. Uh, some of the issues that you run into it, um, putting a big uh, slab of foil over a lure is that um, it's not exactly um, uh, symmetrical. And so you're going to end up with, uh, I, I guess, bubbles in your foil. Uh, now, cool thing is we can actually adjust that because the Nemo stripe pattern isn't exactly straight. Um, so it allows us to 
work around that a little bit and cut out the um, the bubbles in the foil. And there you have it. That looks really cool. And that's just with red. Um, now we did eventually tape off some of the uh, foiling to get some yellow on the belly. We want to add a bit of a mo bit more of a color dimension. There you have it. Looks really good. Also, we taped off the foil to get some uh, black uh, spray paint outlining uh, in there, but that was easy enough to do. Never rush these type of points because uh, if you've got a bad paint job or a bad foiling job, you can start from scratch again and uh, nobody wants to do that. Uh, another cool thing that we did for this little project, uh, we actually made some custom eyes. Uh, these have actually got abalone veneer in them. Uh, might not be able to pick up the colors very well, but these have been punched out out of um, real abalone veneer. The stuff's pretty expensive, but it looks really, really good. Um, and with the epoxy on it, because we did turn it into 3D eyes, um, it really shows off the color. Um, the abalone has got kind of like a, a green bluish color to it. So that really contrasts well with the red and the orange. It's awesome. It looks really, really good. So obviously we want to take our time getting these uh, eyes super glued on there properly. You know, if it's not straight, doesn't matter how expensive your eye is, it's not going to look good. So really taking our time here. As I always say, the eyes really make a uh, lure come to life. Kind of looks like a, a dead design before you put the eyes on. So there you have it. We also uh, spray painted some glitters over this just to give it a bit of extra shine. And as per usual, and as most poppers have, the uh, cut mouth is also spray painted with glitters. That looks really good. So she's all finished up, out of the epoxy, and uh, here we can do some testing. Now she sits tail down, as uh, old good GT lures should, or well, floating GT lures that is, uh, rear weighted preferably. So that's good. So as you can see on a straight retrieve, this lure just swims like a plug. Um, they also call it a darter for that reason, and uh, you can pop it just like any other lure and if you slow pop it you'll see that here it will still wiggle so that's pretty neat it literally does everything dives down on a long sweep on a slow pop it actually wiggles uh, awesome lure very very useful in a wide variety of situations I didn't actually get it on camera but I was actually able to do a walking the dog action with this bait as well so uh, really multi-purpose um, I will say this is probably going to be my new favorite GT lure. You really can't really do anything wrong with it. So now you see big old bloop. These are super easy uh, lures to use. I really didn't have to make a whole lot of effort to get this uh, lure uh, making a nice bubble trail in the water. And as you can see with a regular stick bait sweep, just a slow sweep, it wiggle perfectly from side to side. Now on the really big popping sweeps this thing dives down all the way and leaves a massive bubble trail as you can see here goes all the way and then we'll uh, come up head first as it is real way naturally so big old bloop super easy to use I think this uh, it would also be a very useful lure for big elephant tuna that do like those uh, longer popper designs um, big long bloops uh, through the water very very useful so um, we'll definitely be making more of these uh, some of them might be sold but I'm tempted to say that's all going to be uh, from Japan out and that's going to be all private collection sort of stuff so um, but who knows maybe there's going to be a handful available to the public I don't know about that so uh, anyways guys uh, appreciate you guys watching again uh, we have a little trip booked for June July so we're doing a little bit of fishing, uh, both on the east coast of the US and in Europe. So stay tuned for that as well. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.